G'day, welcome to the channel, it's James here. And as you can see, I have been back at Bunnings and I spotted this Wi-Fi dimmer. It also has Bluetooth. And so today I'm gonna to open it up and have a look inside and see what we find. See if there's an ESP32 in here. And then we're gonna install it and see if we can hook it up and connect it to Home Assistant to find out if this dimmer is any good. Okay, so before we take this apart and have a look inside and before we try it out and see if it works with Home Assistant, just imagine that this dimmer here had a Matter certified logo on it. It doesn't, but just imagine. Okay, so if you don't know what Matter is, Matter is a unified standard that all the major brands are working on so that home automation devices or smart devices can communicate with each other on your local network. And it will happen pretty much automatically if you allow them to communicate. So you get to choose whether they communicate with each other but it's something that will just work. So if you went and bought a dimmer that was Matter certified, you could bring it home, install it, and it will simply work with Home Assistant or any other device that's Matter certified. That's pretty cool. Look out for that. Okay, so this is the dimmer. And the first thing we'll see is that in the top, we've got the little clear cap um, to protect us from touching at all the non-isolated power inside of here. And on top of that, um, you can fit either a HPM style XL range um, to fit in the XL range plates from HPM, or there's a Clipsal cap that you can put on to fit into Clipsal style plates, classic 2000 and 2000 series plates. It only comes in white, so you don't only go onto a white switch plate. Um, so if you had one of these, so this is a Clipsal classic 2000 uh, grid. Um, as you can see, we can mount three of them this way up to three in total. Obviously you could have a two and a one as well. Um, you could also put it onto a five gang plate so you could mount it in the center and have th four ordinary switches around it. And when you do mount it three in one plate, the instructions say that it needs to be derated. Uh, so if it was on its own, you can have up to 250 watts of LED or incandescent. And if it's in a plate with three, it has to be derated by 0.7, which means they can have up to 175 watts per dimmer um, with that derating included. And if we have a look at the terminals, they're nice and big, and I like bigger than most any almost any switch, switch I've ever really used, which is convenient. And it's got active and load on one side and neutral and loop on the other side. And it's handy having that looping terminal there. Now, if you have a look Probably one other thing I noticed about this is the wires come straight out the side. And if it's been mounted in a masonry wall and you have a wall box like so, and so that would be fitted to the wall and this plate would be inserted back like so. Um, as you can see, um, the wires would sort of be sticking out into the side. But it's actually quite a little bit narrower, narrower than some other switches I've used. So that's not been a big deal either, but that's just one thing to note. Um, sometimes these boxes get deformed when they're installed and it may be a little bit tricky to fit it in but still totally doable to fit three in there. If we have a look inside, um, we, first thing we'll see inside is we've got the Tuya module. Uh, it's a WB3S and that is Bluetooth and Wi-Fi but it is not an expressive chip which means you can't reflash it with um, ESP Home or Tasmoda. This does work with uh, to your local though on Home Assistant. Now we've got the tactile switch here, the LED indicator. That LED indicator you can't adjust, adjust or control by a Tuya. Um, there's no data point for it, which means that that is on when the switch is on and off when the switch is off. Uh, we have got a power supply here and because it's Wi-Fi, it needs a bit of extra power so it's quite large and that obviously would run the Wi-Fi chip and also a secondary microcontroller inside, I would say. I can't actually see it, but I'd say there'd be a secondary little controller that would control the trailing edge dimming, uh, and that would be communicated to via this Wi-Fi module with the UART. It looks like the RX and TX are connected um, just here going back into something. And we've got the heatsink here that the MOSFETs or the IGBTs will be attached to, probably MOSFETs and that's the dimmer and it's uh, quite a good dimmer i have used it and i found it to be very good and very easy to install um, so having said that 
Let's jump in and take it across and install it. Okay, so to try out this dimmer today, I'm gonna um, put it in my daughter's room. Now at the moment she's got uh, four whiz down lights and they're individually controllable L RGB lights. And I'm gonna tell you now that it's a terrible idea. It's sometimes they turn on, one's a different color and they're all sort of doing their own thing sometimes. So I'll probably advise against using down lights of that style where each light is controllable individually and rather have just four plain old standard down lights and a controller at the switch plate like we're gonna to install today. It's the way to go. So I'm gonna put in some of these plain, straight up, ordinary nine watt LED down lights. Um, they're dimmable and this is lots of different types. They're all very similar. This particular one is Voltex and I use them because they have a seven year warranty and um, that's the main reason and they're convenient for me to get hold of. And so I'm gonna put these in and then we're gonna put the dimmer in. Okay, so we've got our light switch here and if the wall looks a bit funny, that's because it's um, got a natural clay render on it and that's why it looks a little bit rough. But, um, I've got the power off, so we're just gonna remove our switch and when we look inside of here, we'll see that we have our active conductors and they are going to the center screw, which is the common on this switch. And then we've got a our light switch and that's the white one that's going to the normally normally open terminal and then we have this normally closed terminal here and the neutral is just going to a looping terminal which does is just for joining cables it's not actually form part of the switch so I'm just going to undo these wires unfortunately it's not always the same like it, there's no like switch isn't necessarily going to be white and the active while it's usually red it doesn't necessarily have to be red either um, so that's just the, the norms, but it can change, it can be different. So if we look at this switch here, we can see that the normally closed terminal, which you wouldn't normally often use, you'd use that if it was a two-way switch, and um, that's just closed off with a little bit of plastic. Um, so we're just gonna pop this switch out gently, so that just comes out like so. And we're gonna get our dimmer and it could go this way, or it could go that way. I'm gonna put it this way so that the light is at the top like so. And just snap that in. Okay, so now um, we're just gonna put our switch wire, the white one, into the load terminal. And our active goes into the active terminal. Now, if you are building a house or renovating, I would highly recommend that if you're thinking, or even if you're not thinking about doing smart switches, um, just run a neutral to every switch. A lot of builders will do that nowadays. A lot of electricians will just do it without you asking, um, but it's still definitely good to check that that's what's gonna happen. Because dimmers always, although there are Although dimmers will work without a neutral, it's always better to have one. So that's all connected now. Um, so I'm just gonna make sure that uh, um, indicator's at the top. And screw our plate back to the wall, like so. Okay, so this dimmer is, um, probably a little bit more on the expensive side. It's 70 bucks from Bunnings, that's how much it costs. Um, but it's not too far, too much more than a Shelly dimmer because you don't have to supply a switch. Uh, whereas with the Shelly one, you've got to supply a switch as well, um, which costs at least $15. And I would say that the tactile switch is better than a mechanical one. And there really aren't any tactile switches available that can go into a plate like this. Um, so although it is a little bit more expensive than some choices, this is a good choice and it does work with Home Assistant. And obviously it does work on its own. So if you want to dim, you can hold it and then hold it again to go down. So our switch is installed and as you can see, it's, it's very easy to install. It doesn't take very long, probably only a couple of minutes and we're ready to set it up. Okay, so our power is on and we've got a rapidly flashing light, which means it's ready to set up with our two-year smart app. Um, so don't use the Alec Grid Connect app. Uh, if we use the Tuya Smart app, we can get our local key and connect it up to Home Assistant using Tuya Local. 
Um, as you can see as well, like if I move off to the side, you can't see that light flashing anymore. Um, it's only a minor issue, I guess. Um, so you sort of have to be looking straight at it to see the indication light. Okay, so I'm in the Tuya Smart app. So I'm just going to come up and do plus at the top right hand corner, add device. And I'm under electrical and then come down to dimmer switch, dimmer Wi-Fi switch and select that. And make sure you've got your Wi-Fi details entered in there and do next. And then you confirm that the indicator is blinking, blinking rapidly. So it's blinking quickly. And then we just have to wait for it to add. Okay, so it took too long for it to get it started. So my device has actually stopped. It's not in pairing mode, it's not flashing rapidly. So I'm just gonna stop this. And then I'm gonna, gonna put it back into pairing mode first, and then I'm gonna try again. Okay, so my first attempt at pairing didn't work. So um, we don't have a flashing light anymore. So I'm gonna try putting it into pairing mode again. And the instructions say that if the light is off, which it is, um, you hit the switch five times within three seconds, and then you have to hold it for a sixth and just hold it and it'll go into pairing mode. So. And that is flashing again. Now we can continue with the, trying to pair it with the to your smart app. Okay, so I've put it back into pairing mode. So I'm gonna select Wi-Fi dimmer I'm um, into my Wi-Fi details and confirm it's blacking, blinking rapidly. And that has found it straight away this time. So I'm just going to um, tap to add it. Okay, so that was successfully added. So I'm just gonna change the name. Okay, so that's all connected and done now. So if we look at the light, we can see some of the functions that it has. So that on and off is turning the light on and off in the room right now. So that's working. Um, we can set the brightness. So it looks like it's a scale of 1000 to 10 and that is working beautifully making the lights go up and down um, we can set the minimum brightness here so the minimum amount that it will go to and so I'll leave that at 10 and at 10 these lights are actually still on in here they're actually really really low and we've got a countdown timer and it's in seconds and that goes up to 86,400 seconds and then it will turn off. Okay, now let's just go across into Home Assistant and we can set it up. Now I've got a separate video about how to get your local key and also how you can find out on some devices what the data points mean. And this is one of the devices where you can actually look up what the data points are and what um, type they are. Um, so that's actually pretty handy. Um, if you want the data points for this light, I'll, I'll put them down in the description down below as well if you want to grab them. Okay, so from here on, I'm gonna assume that you have got to your local installed in your Home Assistant, and also that you have your local key for the device you've just installed, and also the you need it helps to know the device ID. You don't have to have it, but it helps. If you've only got one device, you won't need that. Um, so all you have to do is go into settings, and then come to devices and services, and do add integration, and we're gonna to select to your local, and we can see here it's discovered all the devices that I've got in my place at the moment. And the one it, it is, is this one here. So from my device ID, it's this second one. So I'm going to select that. And that's the demo that we just installed. Now I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to copy and paste my local key in here. And of course I've got a video about how to, how to find your local key for two of your devices. And just select submit. Now um, we're gonna set up the light first. So light is the first um, entity. Press submit. Um, ID one is data point one is um, the switch. That's to turn it on and off. So that's that first one that's, we're gonna leave that the way it is. And we're gonna call it the same name. And now the only other one we need is the brightness. And we're gonna select that's data point two, which is this one here. Uh, so, um, this lower brightness here, we can set that to zero. And then do submit. Okay, so untick this because we want to add another one. We want to do the minimum brightness and that's going to be a number. So press submit and then select three, which is the minimum brightness and give it a name. And that's going to be from 10 to 1000 submit that and the last one we want to add is another number and then it's going to be our countdown timer which is data point six and
and that's from 0 to 86,400. So we'll submit that, and then we don't want to add any more, so you click Submit, and then we'll put it upstairs. And that is all done and finished. Now if we come across into um, to your local, we'll see our three entities we've created. So we've got our three entities just here. We've got the countdown timer in seconds. So if we set the lights, if we turn the lights up a bit, so we can increase the brightness a bit and we can turn them on and off like so. And now if we set our countdown timer to 10 seconds, the lights will turn off in 10 seconds. And we can also set our minimum brightness too. But at 10, it's it's actually fine. The, our downlight, downlights are working properly. But you might find that some lights, the minimum brightness might need to be a bit higher than 10. Otherwise, occasionally you'll press the button to turn them on and it'll look like they're off, but it's just down too low. Um, but for these ones, it's working perfectly. Okay, now we'll see that if we use the wall switch, um, the response time is pretty good. We're seeing it um, the turn, on, turn on and off in Home Assistant almost straight away. And if we um, use the dimmer or hold it, we can see it adjusting. Um, so that's pretty good response time, I think. It works really well. And of course, if we have a look at the downlights themselves, um, we can put them up to full brightness. And if we take it down to minimum brightness, you can see that it's actually gone down like really nice and low. Um, and that's, I haven't, I've been watching it for a little while and there's not much flicker happening with these lights. So I'd have to say that I am very impressed with this dimmer. It was better than I expected it to be. And I like the tactile switch and I like many things about it and how well it works with Home Assistant and how easy it was to install. I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If it was helpful, give us a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos, please subscribe. I'll catch you next time.